Did you know you can take a very simple gradient like this one and just add a color stop to both of them, the same color stop for both, and it actually creates two solid bars? We can make this more interesting by turning it sideways and getting the bars to be vertical. The fun thing also is we can add a background size to that and make some stripes like this. We can actually do this with a second gradient as well on the same background image declaration. They're just going to be comma separated. The important thing with this is we're using a little bit of transparency here and we'll come and also set the same background size for it. And now we can create this kind of interesting pattern that we have right there. Hi there, my front end friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me yet again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And I think one really cool way to do that is to have some fun with gradients because, well, we can often use gradients for simple things, just adding a little touch to something or a little subtle you know, change of color or sometimes something that's going to add a lot of spice with a big aggressive gradient. Uh, they do a lot more than that, as we just saw. And there's more than what we just looked at uh, that we can do from creating zigzag patterns to waves and a whole bunch more. And they're by calling them gradients, the name sort of hides the fact that they can do a lot of these really awesome things. So with what we just looked at, it was a little bit of a teaser of the things to come. So let's jump back into VS Code here and get started with the other stuff that we can create. And this is, as I said, just one. And what we're going to do is move down. All I've done for this is set up some sections and we're going to work on each one. Uh, so we can scroll down, get rid of that one and come to the section two, which is not a class <laughs> and start working on that. So we have a color that can come and act as our background. And often when we're doing these effects, we're going to want to use some transparency along the way. So setting sort of a base background color can be a really good starting point to sort of set the stage for things to come. Now for this one, what we're going to be doing is looking at a zigzag pattern. So let's come and first set up the first gradient that we're going to put on here. So of course, we're going to want a background image. And because I have done this with a background color shorthand here, I don't want to, or longhand, I should say, I don't want to use the background shorthand or it would overwrite the longhand that's there. So I'm going to do the entire background image. Uh, of course, you could do these the other way around uh, and then not worry about it. And there are other approaches to setting these up that can sometimes be a bit more concise, but I just find this way is a little bit more clear. So if you're new to the patterns, hopefully it helps you understand exactly how they're working. For the zigzag, the first thing we're going to do is have a transparent that's 50% and then have an actual color that's the other 50% here. And you can see here, this is just that background color that I had here originally. And then what I'm going to do is we'll come here and we're going to say negative 45 degrees to set it so it's actually doing you know sideways like that instead of how we have the other one creating bars we're creating triangles i guess and that made me think of something that could have been useful uh, a few days ago but that's okay um and just really fast i am breaking these down over multiple lines just to make it a little bit easier for readability uh during the tutorial here because i don't like word wrap and stuff and if not we're side scrolling which is terrible for demos and everything but you can write this all along one line no problem now the way i've set this up at the moment it's actually doing you know we're splitting it right in half but we could actually change these points here to be a 75 percent and a 75 percent and it's going to push that triangle up a little bit because we're basically saying, uh, you know, we have the negative 45 degrees on there. So we're turning it around. It's going 75% transparent. And then the last little bit here is going to be filled in with that color. And then what I'm going to do is actually copy this entire gradient that we have here. And we're going to put it in, including the comma after there, four more times. So we have four gradients going on. And I'm just going to rotate each one around a little bit. And you can see now because we've rotated it differently, we're getting the triangle up there uh, and then we want a negative 135 and then a positive 135 and the order of these really doesn't matter uh, but basically it puts a triangle in each corner or gives us sort of this interesting pattern that we have right there uh, and it's just basically about having the four gradients creating a triangle on each side now as we saw with that first one at the beginning if we add in a background size on this background size uh, i'm just going to say four rem four rem uh, it's already going to create sort of an interesting checkerboard pattern right here. Uh, and the reason I'm doing 4rem 4rem is it's doing, um, if I just, that's kind of interesting too, I guess. Uh, but we want to repeat it on both axes. Uh, and we could do something even kind of weirder if I put a comma here, 2rem 2rem, let's say. Um, look at that, that's kind of cool. <laughs> but basically, it's this is going to be used for all of them until I actually declare something else. And if I declare a second one, I think this one is actually getting used for, you know, this would be for my first one here. And then we're repeating that one for all the other ones. So you could have different background sizes for all of them. But for a zigzag, we're going to stick with this. Now, in the previous one, we looked at how we can do background 
size differently, but one thing we didn't use is setting up background positions. So let's go background position next, and we can move these around a little bit, which is kind of interesting. So because I used four rem for the size, I'm going to move the first one over by two rem, and then I'm going to say zero, and then I'm going to move the next one over by the same amount. And then for the other ones, we're just going to do a zero, 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 zero to keep them in the same spot. And look at that, we get a zigzag pattern. Now, if I just do one of them, you can, oh, actually, you can get some interesting stuff coming in here, obviously, by playing around with these numbers. Um, but when we're moving them around, you're just taking those triangles that we created and you're sort of shifting them over. So I want to take those first two that were set up and we're, we're effectively just shoving them over a little bit and it creates this kind of cool pattern that works really well. And really the important thing for the zigzag is just the offset here is half of whatever your background size is. So if I had, you know, if I needed a bigger zigzag, we could put that up and I could increase this to be half and then you get the same thing. This could be a really good use case for custom properties. So you're just updating one using a couple calcs and everything just works really well. Uh, and of course you could get really funky and, and muck around and get sort of these interesting things going on with different stuff just by playing around with the numbers and seeing the types of things that you can create along the way uh, as well. In, in you know changing your zigzags, playing around with stuff by updating these values and seeing what happens. And just before we move on to the next one, I just wanna say really quickly that I had to do a lot of learning to really figure out how this was working. And so there was a lot of sort of research and articles and stuff. So I have linked down below to a lot of the resources I used in learning how to set these up. Uh, I do want to give full credit to the, the resources I did because I didn't figure out all of this on my own. So if you'd rather do reading and you know you prefer blog posts over videos, those are all linked in the description. And with that out of the way, let's get on over to our pluses. So we're going to move down to this section three and we can scroll this down to this next part as well right here. Uh, and we can get started on this. So here again, I'm just putting a base background color, whatever color you would want could work really, you know, should work perfectly fine. Um, and we're going to jump in once again, of course, we're going to need a background image so we can throw that in there. As you guessed, we're going to have a gradient on here. So for this first gradient here, I'm doing the same trick that we just looked at where before we were doing 50%, but now I'm only doing 0.5 rem. So we're moving down 0.5 rem, and then we just have transparent for the rest of it like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a comma and bring in the exact same gradient. But the difference with this one is we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And what that's going to do is if I don't break my gradient there, we have fixed it. So in this second one, uh, you can see that it's just turned 90 degrees. We're doing the exact same thing, but from the left to the right instead of from up to down. Uh, and now the, the fun part starts with how we can repeat this. And as you might guess, uh, the trick for this is the background size. And up until now, we're only using linear gradients, but we're going to get into other sorts of gradients through this as well. And through this, we've so far, we've only looked at linear gradients, uh, but we will be looking at radial as well as conic gradients because both can be super useful at creating some interesting stuff. We're going to sort of step our game up a little bit as we go through these. So for this one, I'm going to come in with a 5rem and 5rem um, value just to give myself a grid like this. And maybe that's already the type of thing that you want to set up and it could be interesting. You could you know, play around with that, create almost like, you know, like a grid paper grid effect with this type of thing as well. Um, so yeah, there we go. That already looks kind of cool, but now we can create some pluses with this. And this is where things get a little bit strange in a sense, um, on how we're going to do this. And it create, requires some creativity and thinking about how we can actually create these types of things by creating patterns and overlaying other patterns and stuff. So the first step for this is bringing in a radial gradient. And I'm, I've made it really bright and sort of in our face just so we can understand what's happening right now. Um, we're gonna change the colors on this to make it all work. So I'm doing a radial gradient. I'm saying it's a circle. Now, because we have a background size, it's declared and it's actually the same, you know, it's five and five, so they're the same. These are always gonna stay perfect circles. Uh, but if I change this to say five and one, where it's uh, maybe we'll do a five and three, um, you can see these are still perfect circles, even though my squares are now rectangles behind it. If we didn't have the circle uh, in there, they would also smush. So just having circle ensures that your radial gradient won't become some awkward sort of oval or something like that. But basically we're saying that we have a circle, it's transparent in the middle. So we have transparent for one rem. And then after that one rem, we're just going to a solid color. So we're just you know, creating this circle that's right there. Now what I actually wanna do is move these circles to somewhere else. So what we're gonna say is background position once again. And for the positioning of this one, it's a little bit interesting because we have to, we wanna move it over and basically I wanna line it up so it's always around this part where they intersect. So to be able to do that, I wanna take half the size of my background size here, 
which would be 2.5. But I also want to take half the size of this because if not, it's going to be off by a little bit. So we need half the size of that, half the size of that. Again, custom properties using calcs could make this just much more adaptable, but we're going to stick with solid numbers uh, for this one just to make it a little bit easier for everyone to read. Um, so on that, we need a 2.75 rem and a 2.75 rem, and, and I'm just going to do 0, 0 for the other ones to ensure that my other lines don't actually move. And now you can see that those circles are perfectly lined up where these are crossing over. And you might be saying, Kevin, I don't understand why we're doing all of this. But if I take my background color now and I replace this trend, uh, the bright pink with my background, then I get some pluses. Now, let's say you don't like that they're lining up here along the edge like this or along the top. You'd rather them start a little bit offset. We could update these values here. So let's just say uh, we'll grab both of these at the same time. And we'll say we do a 2.5 rem and a 2.5 rem offset. If you do this, though, you have to add that number to what we have here. So that should be a 5.25 then. And by doing that, we're just sort of offsetting everything a little bit. It happens to work perfectly with my screen size right now uh, that it's fitting within here. But that is a little bit of luck just because it's a background image that's repeating. So, of course, sometimes it will be cut off somewhere uh, along the way. Maybe you could use viewport units for everything to try and get it to always sort of scale around and stuff. Um, it could be worth the effort. It depends on the type of thing you're creating. And of course, right now, I'm also using really bright colors. You could do this as a really subtle background effect. You could keep these much closer together with smaller background sizes and stuff. So it's just more of a subtle pattern. But to really see what's going on, I am using bright colors for these. Now, just like in the other ones where we played around with the background position and I got some really interesting effects, you, of course, could continue to play around with that. Or you could come in and play around with your background size. They're all the same right now. But I could come in and actually say that that first one has a smaller background size on it, uh, one rem, one rem, and then we have the other ones, and you start coming into some really interesting or, or creative things. So for example, if we did two rem, two rem for the circles, and then one rem, one rem for the other ones, and so you get sort of these fun creative patterns just by mucking around either with the background size or the background position. And if you're trying to come up with these, having the overlaying layers as transparent is always sort of interesting or not interesting, useful. So like not using solid colors just so you can sort of see how things are moving can be really helpful. Uh, and just really importantly, my radial gradient did come first. I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning, but if we're layering things on top of each other, the first one is always the one that's like closest to the viewer. So it's overlaying sort of, you know, we're going deeper and deeper as we go. So just this is the one that will be covering this, which will be covering that one. Always important to remember. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to put this back to the pluses for now, just because that was sort of the, the purpose of that one. But you can see same idea, completely different result. And now we can move down to the next one, which is our section four right here. So for this one, I'm going to use a radial gradient. And again, I'm putting circle here just to make sure that it doesn't get weird oval shapes on it. And um, we're doing our transparent in the middle, so one rem transparent, and then we have the rest of it filling up with this color right there. So we could actually do this by having multiple radial gradients like we saw before, where we have multiple gradients and to build like concentric rings if we wanted to, but we could do it all with one. So here, if I come and I say I want like this color, the light color here, to only be, say, two rem thick, what I could do is take the same color that we have right here, and on that one, we could say that this is going up to 3 rem because the difference between 1 and there is 2. Uh, and then let's just come in. I'm just going to use steel blue as an example color. Um, and we're going to say that steel blue starts at 3. So we get transparent up to 1. Then starting at 1 all the way up to 3, we have the light color we have here. And then we get the steel blue. And I can continue that out. I could say steel blue goes up to 5 rem. And then we have trans parent that starts at 5 rem. And we can get that type of thing going on, which is kind of interesting. We could do a little bit more with this, of course, but we can get this already to be a little bit more interesting uh, if we come in and we add, like usual, a background size. So if I start this, and this is going to be kind of weird, if I start this with a 10 rem, 10 rem, and I just get that repeating itself, as you'd sort of expect. Uh, and let's say I went up to 20, and that would sort of work as well. But Maybe going, well, okay, why were they stuck together before and now they're not? And it's sort of how I'd, I'd set all of this up, um, basically. And because I'm using REM units here, so I'm using like a fixed number rather than a percentage or a viewport unit or something, um, it's not worrying about, it's a saying like we're doing one, then we have plus two, 
So that's uh, th three total. Uh, then, so, you know, we're going all the way up to five. So if we're going all the way up to five, well, that means we have a 10 total. So going all the way up to five with a 10 total means if I have 10 as my background size, they repeat themselves like this. Uh, where this gets kind of more interesting is let's just drop one of these numbers to a smaller value. And maybe this one could be a three. And it probably wasn't what you were expecting right there, right? But it gets kind of, you know, we, and I can pull these closer together. Uh, of course, whoops, that should have been a three to get dots like that because I'm only seeing the transparent part to that and we're not seeing the steel blue coming out of it. Now, I've updated this really quickly, um, just doing going up to the 1.5 here. Uh, and you can see we're sort of getting this ring pattern. So I'm just doing transparent to this color and actually let's take this background size off. Um, so basically I just get this here, right? So we have transparent for one rem, then we have the 0.5 rem here and then it goes back to transparent. So with a background size on there using three, because it's double this, we get these rings like this. Where this is kind of interesting though, is this circle, I can actually move where the circle is within sort of this space that we have here. Um, so I can say, and actually, you know what we'll do? We'll turn off the background size, because this will make it more obvious. Um, I'm gonna say at 100%, 50%. And when I do that, so it's moving it all the way over to here where we only see that half of it. Kind of interesting, right? And I could do this as a negative 50%. So now if I bring my background size back in, I'm going to get that repeating itself over and over and over again. And so here, just really fast, if I update that, we go back to having the circles, the default is 50-50. So what I'm saying is we're, we're moving all the way over and we're starting at like 100% of the way over to the right. And so the gradient is sort of coming out toward the left by doing it this way. Um, and what we can do with that is come in and I'm going to copy this uh, gradient that we have right here and I'm going to put my comma, whoops, and we'll put the comma there and paste this back in. I don't have formatting on, so let's just do that really fast. But what I want to do for this one is start it at the zero side instead and it goes back to the circles. So you might be wondering, well, Kevin, what's the point of this? We had this already. Now, right now, the three and three gives us this, but what I actually want to do is move things around a little bit. So I'm going to change this three here to a five. Uh, and that's going to give us more space because we're, we have extra space up and down, basically. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to move one of these. So what I'm going to do, actually, just so we can see what I'm moving, um, let's change this color a little bit from A. We'll just make that uh, an F just so we can see like one side, you know, they're, they're opposites. And what I want to do is slide the pink one down. So if I want to slide the pink one down, we're going to say background position. The first one can stay at zero, zero. And then the next one, I want to move it down. This is my X, this is my Y. So I want to move my, you know, let's just try negative one and it's not going to be quite enough, but you can see it is moved or, you know, it could be positive one, it's going to move down. And we need to move it down enough to line up with this next one. And for that, it just means we're going to move it by 2.5. And look at that, they line up. And then, of course, if the colors were the same, uh, right, then we get it looking like a wavy pattern, which is really, really cool. And if I change my background size this way, we can just add like more and more space between them, basically, to play around with that. Of course, play with your sizes, different things like that, which would involve updating background positions and everything. So percentages for this could also make it a little bit more obvious or using custom properties once again. Um, the important thing here is the background position is based on the background size that I'm using here. And the background size that I'm using here is based on the size of the actual circles that we're creating. Uh, we were doing them, they're three big each but then we have the 0.5 rem, so it's actually two and a half big each, really, to get them to line up properly. So the two and a half plus, you know, plus two and a half is five. So um, that happens to work, because you might think that it would have to be six, but then they can never quite reach each other, though that does mean you can do kind of cool things like this as well, uh, and then maybe play around with different settings to get interesting stuff going on once again. But I'm gonna bring that back to just being some uh, waves like we had originally. Maybe I will space that out a little more because it's, it's a little bit busy. Um, so something like that could be interesting. And just before we do jump onto the next one, I want to say that all of these could actually be animated. We have app property now, which really opens up the doors to uh, doing stuff like that. So I don't want to jump into that in this video, but I just want to say like, not only can we do creative patterns, we can do creative animated patterns as well, which is really, really interesting, but this is sort of the building blocks we'd want to build upon to create them. And now let's move on to our last one. So we can scroll down to this section right here. 
and scroll on down in our CSS and get started. So for this one, uh, once again, background image, and we could actually, we're gonna use a conic gradient uh, that looks like this. And a lot of the other stuff we've done so far, you could actually do with conic gradients. Conic gradients are for pattern creation are absolutely crazy, but people generally aren't as familiar with them. So I wanted to sort of look at this things people are more familiar with to start with. And basically a conic gradient means start at that color here and spin around until you get to the other one. In this case, I'm using transparent, but if I did red or whatever, it spins around and gets eventually to the red and then you get this big harsh line. Um, and yeah, they're, they're kind of cool. I have a video where I went into a lot of depth with them. So I'll put a card, um, in case you've never played with them before, but we can do some crazy stuff with gradients with them. So the first thing we can do is just like everything else we've been doing so far, you can change, um, sort of the positioning of it, but because it's dealing with the way it spins around something, you can do it in degrees. So I'm going to say 60 degrees and 60 degrees here. And we're doing the same thing we did before. We're starting at the original point. We're going 60 degrees with this color, and then we're doing transparent the rest of the way around. So it gives us this sort of triangle thing like this, which is sort of what we want to start with. Now, like other gradients as well, you can say like starting from top left or we give it the positions like we saw the circle, we gave it a starting point. Um, we can do that here. We can do a from, and I'm going to put 150 degrees, and that's going to give us a triangle right on the bottom like that. And basically it's just, if we take off these 60 degrees that we have right here, take that off, take that off. It's just moving where this first line is. We're spinning that first line all the way down to 150, um, right? So if I change this to 100, we're just going to sort of spin less. And so it's just where that line starts from. We add the 60 degrees in there. So from we're adding from 150, adding 60 degrees, and it gives us this triangle. Now, another interesting thing with this, just like we saw with the circle before where we're doing uh, the, we use the at, I can actually use the at to move where this middle point is rather than, you know, so we spun around, but where should this middle be? So the default is 50%, but then we can also move around. So I can say 30% and you can see it moves up or I can make this 70% and it's going to move down. So I'm going to put it back up to 30% for now, just so we have a bit of a bigger triangle. And guess what? Just like before, we can come in with our background size and I can come in with a number and it gives us this, which is kind of cool. This is sort of, if you had transparency set with a background, you had this like right at the top of your thing. Um, you know, you can give yourself one of these types of shapes along the top of an element uh, if you needed to in a very simple way. But of course, then I could come in with another three rem and then we get triangle patterns. There we go. So, you, you know, it's kind of weird that something that spins around like that can create a triangle pattern like this. But there we are. I think it, it looks pretty good and you can... Uh, play around with your numbers and your spacing and everything as usual to play around with how the triangles look. Now, what we can do here, once again, and as usual, we can make this a bit more interesting by coming in with a second conic gradient, um, or other gradients, I guess, would work as well. And let's change the color on this one. And so now I'm coming with this really bright green color right there, and they're overlapping each other. But of course, then I can rotate this one around to be the other side, and now it's on top going downwards. Uh, but we want to sort of, what I want to do is sort of position it a little bit differently. So this number, say it's like really tiny and basically they're both meeting at the 30% point. They're both meeting like right in the middle right there, but we can take this number and I could make it a bit bigger. So it's going much further down. And this one is on top because of where it is. Uh, maybe we'll do 60 on this one, actually just make it a little bit tinier than the other one. And now what I could do is come in with my background position and I could offset them a little bit, which makes things a little bit more interesting. So my background position here, the first one, I guess we could leave it where it is, is zero, zero. And then we can move this next one over by a 1.5 rem and a zero. And in doing that, we get this coming in there and that's happening because um, we've moved over half of the total distance. So it's giving us sort of this type of thing going on. But what I could also do is I could move up and down. So I could do a 0.5 rem here and I could move it. Let's do a negative 0.5 rem. And look at that. We sort of get these bigger triangles and smaller triangles all interlocking with each other. Um, and I don't know what happened there. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so we're sort of just shoving it up a little bit. So we get the space that's on top of this as well, because these uh, blue ones have been moved and offset a little bit there. Uh, and of course, you know, playing around with this number is going to change the overall effect of it. And you can come up with all sorts of different things. But the 0.5 with the sizes that I have used here uh, work really well. And of course, you could come in and play with these numbers as well and come up with different sorts of patterns uh, and all sorts of interesting things 
right? It's crazy the types of stuff you can do just by mucking around and playing with one of the values along the way for background size and background position on these to create really interesting stuff. And what's really cool with this is now that we have at property, all of these can also be animated as well. So there's really exciting things there. Don't want to go into it in this video, but something that I might look at in the future. And as I just said a bit earlier, if you're not familiar with conic gradients, I do have a video where I go in depth on them. So that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.